Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, August 14th, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. The second last king of the kingdom of Judah was King Jehoiakim. Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came down to Jerusalem and took King Jehoiakim, as well as a lot of the other leading men of Judah and Jerusalem, into exile. In place of King Jehoiakim, uh, Nebuchadnezzar set up Zedekiah as king in Jerusalem. Now, the Lord told Zedekiah that he would have a long and prosperous reign if he remained faithful to the king of Neb uh, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Unfortunately, Zedekiah thought he knew better, and so he went down to Egypt and made an alliance with the Pharaoh of Egypt against Nebuchadnezzar. In our reading from Ezekiel today, the Lord is going to tell a parable about two eagles and um, some plants that they planted. Uh, king Zedekiah is going to be portrayed as a vine that was planted, uh, but instead of reaching out to the one who planted him, uh, this vine reaches out toward someone else and winds up being uprooted. And this parable, of course, predicts how exactly what was going to happen to King Zedekiah. Nebuchadnezzar was going to come and completely uproot him and take him away to Babylon. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, pose a riddle and speak a parable to the house of Israel. You are to say, this is what the Lord God says. A huge eagle with powerful wings, long feathers, and full plumage of many colors came to Lebanon and took the top of a cedar. He plucked off its topmost chute, brought it to the land of merchants, and set it in a city of traders. Then he took some of the land's seed and put it in a fertile field. He set it like a willow, a plant of by abundant water. It sprouted and became a spreading vine, low in height, with its branches turned toward him. Yet its roots stayed under it. So it became a vine, produced branches, and sent out shoots. But there was another huge eagle with powerful wings and thick plumage. And this vine bent its roots toward him. It stretched out its branches to him from the plot where it was planted so that he might water it. It had been planted in a good field by abundant water in order to produce branches, bear fruit, and become a splendid vine. You are to say, this is what the Lord God says. Will it flourish? Will he not tear out its roots and strip off its fruit so that it shrivels? All its fresh leaves will wither. Great strength and many people will not be needed to pull it from its roots. Even though it is planted, will it flourish? Won't it wither completely when the east wind strikes it? It will wither on the plant where on the plot where it is sprouted. The word of the Lord came to me. Now say to that rebellious house, don't you know what these things mean? Tell them. The king of Babylon came to Jerusalem, took its king and officials, and brought them back with him to Babylon. He took one of the royal family and made a covenant with him, putting him under oath. Then he took away the leading men of the land so that the kingdom would be humble and not exalt itself, but would keep his covenant in order to endure. However, this king revolted against him by sending his ambassadors to Egypt so that they might give him horses and a large army. Will he flourish? Will the one who does such things escape? Can he break a covenant and still escape? As I live, this is the declaration of the Lord God. He will die in Babylon, in the land of the king who put him on the throne, whose oath he despised and whose covenant he broke. Pharaoh, with his mighty army and vast company, will not help him in battle, when ramps are built and siege walls constructed to destroy many lives. He despised the oath by breaking the covenant. He did all these things even though he gave his hand in pledge. He will not escape. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. 
As I live, I will bring down on his head my oath that he despised and my covenant that he broke. I will spread my net over him and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon and execute judgment on him there for the treachery he committed against me. All the fugitives among his troops will fall by the sword, and those who survive will be scattered to every direction of the wind. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. This is what the Lord God says. I will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and plant it. I will pluck a tender sprig from its topmost shoots, and I will plant it on a high towering mountain. I will plant it on Israel's high mountains so that it may bear branches, produce fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind will nest under it, taking shelter in the shade of its branches. Then all the trees of the field will know that I am the Lord. I bring down the tall tree and make the low tree tall. I cause the green tree to wither and make the withered tree thrive. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. We now turn our attention to two more Psalms of David. Um, in both of these Psalms, uh, David cries out to the Lord for security and help. Psalm 60, for the choir director, according to the Lily of the Testimony a mictam of David for teaching. When he fought with Aram Naharayim and Aram Zobah, and Joab returned and struck Edom in the Salt Valley, killing 12,000. God, you have rejected us. You have broken us down. You have been angry. Restore us. You have shaken the land and split it open. Heal its fissures or its shutters. You have made your people suffer hardship. You have given us wine to drink that made us stagger. You have given a signal flag to those who fear you so that they can flee before the archers. Save with your right hand and answer me so that those you love may be rescued. God has spoken in his sanctuary. I will celebrate. I will divide up Shechem. I will apportion the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. And Ephraim is my helmet. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my washbasin. I will throw my sandal on Edom. I will shout in triumph over Philistia. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? God, haven't you rejected us? God, you do not march out with our armies. Give us aid against the foe, for human help is worthless. With God, we will perform valiantly. He will trample our foes. Psalm 61, for the choir director, on stringed instruments, of David. God, hear my cry. Pay attention to my prayer. I call to you from the ends of the earth when my heart is without strength. Lead me to a rock that is high above me, for you have been a refuge for me, a strong tower in the face of the enemy. I will dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the shelter of your wings. God, you have heard my vows. You have given a heritage to those who fear your name. Add days to the king's life. May his years span many generations. May he sit enthroned before God forever. Appoint faithful love and truth to guard him. Then I will continually sing of your name fulfilling my vows day by day. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.